about the two face would be it's like you're working on a giant iPad. That's what that software basically does to your um, your touchscreen uh, monitor that you're doing. It, it's got all the nice swipes and transitions and that sort of thing. Um, cons would be there is a cost involved. The software is probably about 500 bucks plus a $200 yearly cost for each display that you got. So it can add up if you got multiple kiosks. Um, the Rise display that I started out with abandoned because I couldn't get it to work and then I actually am going back to now. Um, it's really easy to use. It's free. Um, also, one of the cool things is that kiosk can now go on the web so anybody can use it. Um, one of the cons is it's not quite as polished as the Intuaface product and you're kind of limited in what um, display methods you've got for your content. Um, so, general information about how I'm displaying the information is it all pulls from a Google Sheet. Um, so, what we had is we've got some tech support students and we had them over the course of about a year take all thousand plus bios and plaques and everything that we had and they would um, kind of fill in, I created a template for them, so they put in the last name, first name, what year the person graduated, as far as the Athletic Hall of Fame, what year they were inducted, a link to a photo, and then their bio. Um, so we had our kids kind of painstakingly go through all those files and I'm really glad I didn't have to do it. I'm pretty sure those kids wanted to kill me after they were done, but uh, it turned out really well. I just kind of went through as they were working on it and spot checked for typos and other things. So that was really awesome that I was able to use that free labor to work on that. Um, so, now that I'm flying through and we're halfway done with my presentation, here is what the Intuit Face display looks like uh, at our high school. So, uh, when you walk up, it's kind of got a, a screensaver that just shows just the pictures that's always cycling through different people. So, you walk up and touch it, and then you kind of get this, this main screen where you can uh, choose different categories that you want to look at. Um, once you would choose a category, then you would choose a person. So you can kind of see all these people. You can scroll through them just like you would, like if you were looking at Atlas on an iPad. Uh, so then when you would click on somebody, you would get this nice screen that had their bio here. For some people who have a book like he does, you can scroll through, um, get a little picture, and get some other information. One of the other cool things that we can do with this that we're starting to look at now is if we had uh, like a highlight reel of somebody, say somebody who's in football, they had a little highlight reel, we could include that in here too. So you walk up, you could watch this guy's little highlight reel. Um, we also have our all-state band and choir members on here. So if we had a little video of them playing, um, you could walk up and click that as well and see some of that. So that's something we're looking at as we kind of roll forward um, now that we've got this up. So now here's basically the exact same thing, but now I've created it in the Rise software. So you walk up, you've got some different options. Um, here it, it's kind of utilitarian as far as you walk up and then you can kind of scroll through the people you want to see. If you want to sort, you can sort. Um, and that's one thing that with the current uh, Intuaface software that you can't quite do that inline sorting. And that's one thing that people have said now that we've been that we've had it is, well, I have to scroll through a really long list of people to see who I'm looking for. Well, now with this, um, they can just you know sort by last name, or if you want to sort by graduated or adopted here, you can do that. And then, as far as the rise display, this is what the individual person's um, screen would look like. So if I clicked on somebody, it'd give me a picture, kind of their bio, and all that sort of stuff. So you can kind of see that rise isn't quite as pretty as the Intuit face but it's free, so we can't believe really that. Um, so as far as costs and everything, um, this is kind of the, the first kiosk that we've done, and I've got two more sitting in my office waiting to be made. Um, so the touch screen, it's a 42-inch touch screen, costs about 2100 bucks on CDW. Um, my other two kiosks are gonna be 32-inch ones, um, so that was cheaper there. Um, I bought a Nook computer from Bytespeed, and what that is, it's a little square computer that just sits bolted on the back of that display. Um, so that's the, the computer that kind of facilitates all this. So with all my other miscellaneous supplies, like letters and, and nice wood that I've got mounted to, it's about 200 bucks. So my total cost for this kiosk was about 2800 bucks. Um, the awesome thing about this is now, once I've got that initial startup cost, with the rise, there's no ongoing cost with that. So 
I can perpetually update stuff. <clears throat> so some gains that we've gotten by moving to the kiosk. So we were pretty limited on space, kind of like I said before. So we had to restrict what was put on the walls. Well now, we don't have any real restrictions. So now I can put up um, like FFA kids who have made it on to, to different state jobs or um, other things like that, we can put on the kiosk. It, there's, there's no real limit um, as far as what we can put on there. It's really easy to update. Like I said, it's just a Google spreadsheet. So you type your information on the Google spreadsheet and then within a couple of minutes, my finished kiosk has got that new information. <clears throat> so no more ordering plaques, drilling holes, and everything like that. Um, also, like I said earlier, you can display video, so you can do short video clips associated with that person. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Um, one thing that, one of the kiosks that we're building right now is um, in our auditorium, so we're going to have like information about the current musical or player, whatever that's going on. You can, they can walk up and purchase tickets right on that. Um, if you wanted to look at past musicals or your past uh, plays, you might have a little quick little clips that people can uh, walk up and see on those. Um, yeah, that's that's really there's no there's no limit. It's pretty much whatever you can think of. Is yeah, what's up? You figured out a way to integrate cable TV feed into your riser and stuff. So it's kind of a segue, and we can talk about. Digital signage kind of is a bigger picture. I also use RISE around our district um, for digital signage as well, the non-interactive part. So with that, I don't have cable TV, but what you could do is, if you had some kind of device that would stream, create a web stream, then you could import that into RISE. So like our basketball games, I've got a live stream that I can kick over on RISE, so it would show a full screen what's going on in the gym. So if you had some way to encode those cable channels into a Network stream, you could do that. Yeah. Multiple uh, tab displays. Like I want to, let's say I want to do something like this, and I want to have one of composites. You know, so you go down to the bottom, push a tab for composites. Is yeah. Rise getting better at doing multiple page things? Yes. Yes. It's a lot better than it was a year ago when I kind of started this process. So, <clears throat> what I did was when we kind of started creating all this, and I have the kids taking all the information from the sheets and putting it on Google. I started out with Rise, and what I did, I actually created a different Photoshop file for every single page that I did. So that was getting pretty, um, pretty time consuming, and I didn't want to have to, okay, now every time we have to do something, I have to um, create a new Photoshop file. So um, one of our tech support students, his dad works for Iowa State, and he came and said, oh yeah, my dad uses this one program, it works great. So he came back the next day with the name and it was that Intua face. So that was like a godsend because it would all update dynamically. Um, now it's been a year and I've got, had a little more time to kind of play with Rise. It's a lot more evolved in the multiple page um, sort of thing. So that was, that's kind of like what this screen would do. So right. consider those like your tabs. Right. So each. I would just create a box that has a link to go to the next the correct presentation. So if you click Fine Arts, you go to <clears throat> the Fine Arts category. Is your background static or is it like a motion? That's static. That's just um, a file I made in Photoshop. Um, that is one thing with Rise was, let's see, that it's actually dynamically pulling in pictures from what I've got in the folder. So if I added a new picture to that folder, it would update there as well. Anybody have any other questions? Can you run multiple, like multiple kiosks of the same presentation? You could. Yep. That's one thing we've thought of is have have a couple with the same presentation. Um, probably what we're going to do is. <clears throat> we kind of started out with the one, and we were going to kind of make the one for everything. And then we decided, okay, so we'll make one for activities, and we'll make one for academics. So my activities one will have all your sports hall of fames, all your state athletes, that sort of thing. And then on the academic side, you'll have um, like national scholars, you'll have that sort of thing on it. So that way we can kind of, kind of separate the two. Um, and that seemed to be a logical break. Are there tracking statistics or anything like that that you can keep track of how often it's used? Um, 
I don't know. I've never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Since since Rise is basically just a web platform, you can embed a Google Analytic uh, hidden iframe or something on the on each presentation. So that gives you some pretty good data. Um, as far as a two of face, I'm not sure if you could accomplish that or not. When you do the multiple pages, you have to do an HTML or is there whether it's work now with you still have to do a little HTML trick. So what what I did is I create the box for each button and then I click HTML and then you put a line of code that says on click go to this presentation. So there's a little bit of back end work. So there's there. actually separate presentations. That Correct. Yeah. Done. So I have, have a page, page that says Yeah, like I have a page that says Wall of Pride Home. Then I have a page that says Academic Home. Then I have a page that says That makes more sense. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, because they do have you've probably seen their way of yes. doing multiple pages on the same presentation, right. and that's a nightmare. Yeah, I was so. trying to pull one of those apart and figure out how they were doing it, and I've gotten nowhere. Yep. Yep. That's what I needed. Yep, there's just a, a little bit of code, and if you want to email me or come up later, I can get you that code, but it just says, you paste it in, it says, on click, go to this. So, and that kind of works the same for, you see I've got like a return button, it's got the same thing that runs, it's just JavaScript that says, on click, go last page. <coughs> so. Yeah. Are you using Rise Vision hosting? Yes. Right. So, um, while I said Rise is free, they do have some components that cost. One of those components is if you wanted to host all the material on Rise itself. To me, I justified it as I'm doing a whole lot of stuff with Rise, so that's 120 bucks that I'm happy to give them as far as using their totally free service. Um, otherwise, you could host it on a Google Drive and make it public. You could host your materials there too. Um, I just chose to host it. Last time I knew, they kind of shut down the Google hosted thing because they were losing money that way. Sure. And I was just talking with Cameron about it. He said that they are Kurt or someone who said that they're not letting me do that anymore. Okay. And so I just have mine on my internal web server. Sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah and put it on your internal web server or whoever hosts your stuff if you do. Um, like I said, it was 120 bucks a year. I, I'm more than happy to give that to Rise as far as is how much we use the platform. So is that unlimited data storage thing? <laughs> Um, I don't know what the limit is on their cloud storage. Um, you can, so, Rise, since Rise is just a, really essentially all it is is it's, the player is just a full screen Chrome window. So, you can play YouTube videos, you can play Vimeo videos, you can play wherever you want to host them. And that's kind of how we get the, the streaming of our athletic events. I just have a schedule that says, on this game day, switch to this presentation that has a full screen box that's our, a full screen player for our uh, live stream. What's the, what was in Two of Faces cost? Uh, so in Two of Faces, I think it was around, don't quote me on it since it was a couple years ago, but it's around 500 bucks for the creator software. And then that's a one-time expense, but then your reoccurring expenses, there's like a 200-ish dollar a year figure for each kiosk that you have. So if you've got one kiosk, fine, it's not a huge deal, but when you're starting to think about maybe scaling that out, because once you get one, you're going to think of a ton of ideas um, for more. So that's kind of what started my going back and looking at your eyes. Um, but you can't deny that the 2FA looks fantastic, and it, it works really well. Um, but Rise is doing a great job, too. So I kind of, once I had my presentation, how I like it, and do a face, and it's been up for I, I don't know, it's been up for close to a year now. So we've gotten a lot of feedback from different people on what works, what doesn't work. So that's what's kind of had me retune how I'm doing it now on Rise. I uh, like the filtering. That was one of those comments that a lot of people said they really wanted to see. So we built that in. I'm sure that you said this and I probably just missed it. Did you just email out to all alumni and have them write a bio or? No, so uh, what we do is, and they've, the guy kept fantastic records. So it's a former teacher who, kind of ran the Hall of Fame program before, so they would compose, they'd induct like four people a year. So they'd compose a bio, well he kept them on file. So we had all these sheets of chicken scratch that was kind of hard for our kids to read at times, but um, we took those handwritten and then composed them. Um, for some of the other things like the state athletes, we had pictures with a little uh, plaque at the bottom that had a name, and they were a state qualifier for this, or they were state champion in this. So we just took that, took all those pictures, scanned them in, and then our kids would 
put that text into the Google spreadsheet. So once you kind of got over that initial legwork, and, and there was a lot of it, I mean, it took us almost a full year to, you know, having a kid for one block a day, get all that information transcribed, but um, it was worth it. Any other questions? Did I hear you say you can schedule when things show up and don't show up? Yeah, so let's, we'll kind of just transition it over and make it digital signage. I'll pull our stuff up. See if the internet works. Okay, so we'll take for example um, our lunch menu. So we have a TV that's over our high school cafeteria, the doors to that. So instead of having the paper taped thing on what's for lunch every day, we switch to this uh, doing it on rise. So what 90% of the time it's got my normal digital signage display, except for uh, during lunch. So every day between 10:30 and 12:30, it changes presentations and it goes to one that only shows the lunch menu. So, you know, most of the, I could leave this lunch menu on all day, but I figured I've got a TV there, I might as well use it. So, it'd be the same for your, your sporting events. You would say, um, I had one in here, so I would say start date, whatever date that game was, so I could go in, you know, the week of that game, and say, okay, from, 6, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. I want you to show this presentation and that presentation was the one that had the full screen player. So, yeah. So for your, <coughs> for your lunch schedules, are you showing a document? Or so, is going from uh, Google Sheets? Yep. Or how does that all? I'll show that. So this is what it would show <coughs> during lunch. This is the, what the finished product would look like. And all that's pulling from is a Google Sheet that our uh, kitchen staff update every morning when they come in really early. They'll just up update that Google spreadsheet. Um, and the nice thing is I have, this also pulls into our main digital signage display. So, let's see. So what that lunch lady does is she actually fills it in for all three of our buildings. Um, so, here it'll show what the high school menu is and it's got the date and then after 10 seconds or whatever, it's gonna show what's on lunch for the middle school. So this is what our normal digital signage is across the district. Have you uh, gotten brave enough to put the hashtag up yet? Yep, been rolling that way for almost two years. We've had a handful of trouble, but you know what? For those trouble cases, we get on the kid and it goes away. So to us, the risk is worth the, the gain on that one. So here. It's our unfiltered Nevada Cup Pride hashtag, so if you want to say Nevada sucks, you could. It would show up on all the TVs around the district, but um, the one biggest trouble we've had is kids from both of these schools come for a game night. They realize that their tweets will go up there. And this, I've got only showing the last 15 tweets on the hashtag, so if we become aware of that, we'll just tweet a bunch of stuff or retweet a bunch of stuff on the school account, and then it all goes away. So, there are ways around it. I mean, it's one of those things. And it, our tweets show up on the website too, so it, if we some, somehow we become aware of it pretty quick. I mean, either if kids tell the principal, oh my God, there's something horrible on the TV. Um, the worst thing is when your lunch lady spells sloppy joes wrong on the lunch menu and it becomes sloppy hose. <laughs> on an 85 inch screen, that looks really bad. So. It's not just your kids you got to worry about. <laughs> I was going to set you up for that. 
I, I knew I you. Do I knew you would, so I figured <laughs> I might as well just rip the bandaid off. <laughs> so here it's showing pictures from our, our Facebook account. So um, we use if this then that to take pictures whenever we post to our Facebook account and upload them to a Flickr album automatically because Rise can has a Flickr gadget. So it's pulling whatever the top 20 pictures are from our newest pictures from our Facebook account. And we've got 100 pictures a day that are going up on that thing. So that way there's always some kind of nice updated, uh, updated content on there. So not only is this our digital signage solution, we had also intended to work with Mediacom to get a cable channel in town so that this would be what we would pump out over the cable channel too. Um, and that ended up, Mediacom wanted 20,000 bucks for the privilege of doing that, so we said, yeah, no. Uh, so that kind of fizzled out, but it works great. And, you know, this is, it's playing over the web, so if I wanted to embed this in a player on our website, I could. And that's kind of the nice thing about Rise, is when I've got my interactive kiosk here, versus in Two-A-Face, it has to use that proprietary Windows software. The Rise stuff will work on anything, so if I've got that interactive kiosk, now I can pull it up on my iPad, I can pull it up on my Android, I can pull it up on my Apple Newton. I, it's pretty platform agnostic, so um, that's one of the cool things about this. So now, you know, Grandma in Arizona can look at the Hall of Fame kiosk, or some alumni who moved away a long time ago can now look at that and maybe choose to make some kind of donation. Questions, guys? How have you transitioned with all the rise changes that they've had? It hasn't been too bad, really. Um, I'm trying to think if I've had to change anything. I don't think I really had to change. The storage was just the one thing that I knew it was coming out, so. You planned Yep, I kind of planned ahead. Are you using the app player, or did you ever switch over to the other one that they did? I moved over to their, we just, rolled out a couple more digital signages and I had to move to whatever their new their new player is. They switched back to the app so you can't go back now. We were very happy with it. Yeah. But then now they switched it back so now we're back. Better. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things is that sometimes they're gonna make changes and you may or may not know so you it's a free service I guess. Yeah. So you said you bought a, <coughs> a, a byte speed or something like yep. that? Yep. Yep. What are the requirements that you need for the computer part? It's nothing. I mean, you could run... So, Rise does sell their own players, which are rebranded byte speed machines, right? Yeah, a lot of them. So, they're not really... So, I'm a player. I don't write speed. So, don't say anything bad about me because I'm sitting there. <laughs> but, um, but, so, Rise, like, their store, we're on there, too. They, yeah. they just find whoever and... They've got... It, it'll, it'll run on Chrome. So, if you <coughs> Chrome box to throw on the back of your TV, you could. <coughs> and don't mark, they mark out their stuff, so don't go through the right store, so they add like yeah. a whole bunch of money. Like, like I said, all the, all their player is, is a full screen, what it gets down to is a full screen Chrome window. So, it, as far as what it takes to run this, not much. We started out with the i3 though, and I bet people, some of the people with the Chrome boxes have had yeah. trouble. I've heard a lot of, and if, the pies, like if you're doing a lot of video. And if you're yeah. just looking at something and doing like announcements, it's going to take nothing. But if you're looking at pictures and, you know, I've got a lot of moving content where this is scrolling, that's scrolling, that's doing something different. You may want something a little beefier, yeah. or if you're looking at doing streaming. All I did that as well. I started on a Raspberry Pi first yep. edition. When I was just doing the images, it was fine. But yep. once we started going up to something like this, you know, we're going yep. Twitter feeds and pictures. And yeah, because I really, this is. All that stuff. It, it, we, we ended up going to Chrome boxes with i3s, yep. and they work a lot. Better. It's pulling from a lot of different places. I mean, it's pulling from CNN for the news. It's pulling from Twitter here. It's pulling from Google Sheets. This is pulling from our website. Then there's another one that pulls from our activities calendar. So there's a lot going on in the background. Um, if you're streaming or if you're broadcasting some kind of video over it, that's probably going to take a little bit of horsepower too. Um, so uh, as far as, I mean, the, the Nook does everything you need. It may be overpowered for some of the stuff we're doing for most of our displays, but... We're backing a little down to that dual core too, instead of just yep. saying you have to do a recommending that they were doing the dual core, which brings that price down yep. quite a bit, and it seems to be funny. Yep. The way I look at it is, to me, it's, I guess, additional insurance. Mm -hmm. It's I prefer to just kind of set it and forget it, not have to climb up the ladder to that TV again. Um, 
but yeah, it'll it'll run on anything. I mean, if you've got an old G3 Mac, hook it up to a TV if you want some kind of proof of concept, you can do it. Which there are a lot of people that are doing. Just find some old piece of hardware, hook it up to a TV you got a Sam's Club or something, you know, and away you go. Somebody else that I was talking to that already had their building uh, wired over channel one was mm -hmm. actually pumping this out over their internal channel one connections as well. Yep. They already had all the TVs and all the rooms plugged yep. in, so they were spinning it out over a digital channel. Yep. So yeah, like I said, that, that was my plan was to take this and broadcast it to the entire town with just a, a cable encoder, and I have all the equipment, but <laughs> MediaCom did not want to. That was apparently providing a service to the customers. Was, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I don't want to. I don't, I'm, I'm doing good, but when I was first looking into it, that's what you said. That's like, oh, pretty cool. It's yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and you know, you could, I chose to use the same presentation across the district. If you wanted individual ones for each building or something, you could. That's no big deal. Um, one thing I kind of mentioned when I talked about this stuff is, when I originally designed this, I designed it so that I wouldn't have to do anything to it once it was up and going. So, like the announcements, the secretary's already put that information on our website, so it's just pulling from there. The lunch menu, that was a green sheet that our secretary was already filling out, so it's pulling from there. Um, the activity calendar, that's already populated from our activities, activities department, so it's pulling from there. So as far as day-to-day -day stuff, we have better things to do than fill this out with announcements and things. If you wanted to, you could if it was on a small scale, but I didn't want to have to do that. Did you say you're pulling the calendar? How does that look? Um, I tried to pull like pull So it's broken right now. We use our school for our activities calendar. Um, they, have an, they have an RSS feed, but then they came back and said, now you got to pay for that, because they had a bunch of people doing this. Um, so we pay 100 bucks a year, I think, for that. It works some days, it doesn't work others. So right now it doesn't work. But how it would look is basically like this. So you have your name, it's just an RSS feed, so you have your name of your event in bold, time and other details, they're small. But there's no way to get like a month view calendar? Yes, there is, is there? and that's part of that extra fee. Okay. So, because I, the, the calendar they give you is just today's events, right. and I said I want a week. So they created a custom RSS feed for us that'll do a week. You got our school to do that for you? Yeah. And it depends on who you talk to. The first person <laughs> I talked to said you couldn't do it. After finally calling around a couple different times, they, they were able to make that work. You've been able to get um, an RSS feed to for, by like location, so like for middle school, you can only get an RSS feed for middle school. Yes. Because every time that I've played with that, it's always, it's all of it or it's none of it. Yes, that is where you would, I think, if you did, have you tried like the advanced filter where you filter that way? I thought I had it. I, I never thought I could get it to work, but it's been a that's, years. So. That's what I do to get it to sync with my Google Calendar. Okay. That creates a special feed for like our auditorium. I've got a calendar for that. So I just get those events. So I could take that RSS feed and dump it into here. So it, you have got that to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything to manage the power of the TVs? Because the biggest issue I have with our digital science is getting the secretary to turn the I, TV off. I have two things. I have. The biggest thing that now that I've, the first couple TVs I had Christmas light timers on. So when the Christmas light timer would get to 7 a.m. and flip it on, and when it would get to, um, you know, 7 o'clock at night, it would turn it off. Now I've got like an IR beam or actually physical cut power? Physical cut power. So I would tell the, I'd tell the PC I'd set up a scheduled time to shut it down like five minutes before so it had a nice shutdown on it, and then it would just kill power to the TV. Um, what I've got now is I'm making sure to buy displays that have that built-in on-off timer available. So the nooks are on 24-7, but they're low power, so I'm not too concerned there. But at least the TV knows when to turn on and off. And they're, they're smart enough to know if it's a weekday or if it's a weekend. <coughs> so I can say the weekend, it doesn't need to be on. So I'll leave it off during that time. What kind of TVs are you getting that are coming up future set? Um, I've just been buying um, Samsung, just their nicer LED. TVs. Consumer. I've just been buying con consumer. Do they, they have that timer in them? Yep. The cheapest Samsungs do not, and that's what I originally bought, just for kind of a proof of concept. So the little nicer, I don't know if it's their smart TV line or, or I think it's their smart TV line. Well, FYI, too, if you call in on board, you don't say that you're using yeah. a digital display. 
Yeah. yeah. For, <laughs> for our, it was at home and this just blew up. For like our, our 80 inch TV that's in the launch room at the high school, it's on from 6 till 10 at night because basketball games and things, I just leave it on all night. So if they wanted to watch the stream, it'd be on there or if there's other activities going on. So that's a commercial brand one. Um, for our ones that are just on during the school day, I guess I'm rolling the ball and getting cheap ones. We made an opportunity with this as well to actually sell advertising mm -hmm. outside of our gym. And so we've been, we sold ads for like 250 bucks and we've sold eight of them so far. And during the day we just have paid ads, you know, which is an awesome way to make some extra money to get you to the waiver machine. One thing we're, we kind of toy with is using this as a poor man's um, video display in our gym. So we've got the nice video scoreboard on our football field now. Well, now those advertisers that are paying for ads on that want something in the gym. So if we could find a way to ruggedize that from the odd volleyball and basketball and get chucked at it. Yeah. We've got it done because I know we've got that in our we've got that yeah. in our gym, and somebody comes in and manages it and pays for it, and we get jack diddly out of it. Well, so we, except for this big 80-inch LCD that's hanging on the wall that they've guaranteed to not be destroyed. Okay. We may want to see if we can find out what brand that is, because we've got the same we pay an advertising company that gives us a portion of the revenue. They didn't sell worth a crap. Our athletic director has gone out and sold way more ads mm -hmm. that we're seeing good money off of. And we actually let our kids design those ads. Um, we had a, was it a sport, um, some kind of sports medicine or energy drink place came in and they had our video production kids make them a video ad that we could play on the scoreboard um, for the you know the 10 second little still <coughs> shot that plays before games. Our kids have made those, so we've kind of taken that as an opportunity to get the kids involved in that as well. Nice. Any other questions? Any observations or wanting to know how it work? Yeah. Can the can the bite? I don't want to say the bikes speak beers. Can those, um, they have more than one display output? So the bike speeds have two HDMI, right? Or do the new ones, are the new ones different? The, the new ones, I don't, Intel and their infinite wisdom has decided that nobody just uses like a normal HDMI port anymore. So they have switched us and this is, I think the third gen, so it's got that. So now you got mini display and mini HDMI. So we just adapt to anything. So then we have a mini display port to HDMI and mini display, but you can run dual ones. And I do have a guy that is running four with a splitter, which kind of surprised me. I thought there wouldn't be enough power, but it seems to be running just fine. And they're they're on a big board, kind of like this all surrounding all the TVs are, but he's got a four-way split and I'm working great. So you always have to worry. I mean, if you stretch, stretch a picture of your HDMI, how well it's going to behave. But is it four display showing? Um the same thing. Segre uh, showing the same thing, okay. Yeah, so if you, want the, if you want different display content, you got to do different sister box. Okay. We, you couldn't do dual display and have, a, have, have what would be like an extended player, potentially? So yeah, it, it, you can have, yeah, as long as you want to show the same content, okay. you can do. Or you could do like you were saying with the splitter and run through a ton of different ones too. Yeah, I don't know if you can use the two ports to power separate displays. Yeah. With separate content on them. Oh no. Content. Same content. It's well. It's, I mean, your box is just a dumb. It, yeah. Thing. So, I mean, it's just saying push this display out if you want. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the software is smart enough to know to be able to even if you had a really nice desktop with multiple video cards. I don't know that the Rise software can pick. It just takes over the operating system too. Yep. So there's no yeah, it takes over, you know, it hides the mouse and it does a lot of other things. It changes power settings, I think. I don't know if it was you, but when we first started doing this, I was pushing a lot of them out with, we said, you know, you have to have a wired connection. And it might have been you. Somebody said, well, Anna, if my wireless network goes down, I got way bigger fish to fry than whether my content's current on my <laughs> displays. But I, I would say probably 90% of the issues that we have where people say, gosh, I'm having problems with rise is network issues where they're running over wireless and don't have a good connection. So, but there is something to be said about wiring if you can. Obviously, in some locations, but dropping out cables is not an option. Yeah, are for, you ours, wired? for ours, there's a handful that are wired, um, but a lot of them either for aesthetics or it's just hard to get an Ethernet drop there. They run wireless and they do great. 
They do, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they do push the content to whatever it can. So if your connection were to drop, it's going to be able to play some of that stuff. Um, you know, like streaming video and stuff, obviously that's not going to work. But as far as your normal stuff, I think that would work okay. Does your annotated function work like going USB from the uh, display to the computer? For the touch screen annotated? That's, is that how it interfaces? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because the, the touch screen display is just acting like a mouse. Mm -hmm. So, So yeah, so if I need to pull up that. Chromebook happens to actually be touch screen, so. <laughs> so if I wanted to, I mean, that's bad because it's not a long list. So this is, you can kind of see one of the things that if you've got kind of a slower internet connection, it's going to take a little bit to load the content. But here, if I wanted to scroll through using my finger, I can. Um, the Intua Face Player, it works with, if your display supports multi-touch, you can do the, I can put the picture up and I can zoom my picture in or that kind of stuff. So that's one of the things that that software has that Rise does not, but it wasn't really something that we needed. So. And your lunch lady for like the menu thing, she has to put that in before they launch the player. For no, the, the player runs. It, it updates every, I don't want the interval is, but it updates every so often, every five minutes maybe. Okay. So she updates that Google spreadsheet within a couple minutes. That's reflected on all those displays. Okay. Is that the same if you, in, if you, because we use like a Google presentation, yep. you do the same thing? Is that the same way or is that I don't different? know if presentation works the same way. I know Sheets is dynamic. Okay. I'm not sure about presentation. Because you know. at least I, I haven't worked with it myself, but one of my guys has complained of if the menu goes in or gets changed after they've launched it, they have yeah. to quit out and okay. relaunch that. So maybe we need to move the Sheets. Yeah, I did. And I'll show you why. I guess it, I could have done it either way. Um, I'll show you kind of why I did Sheets, though. And it came about after we added that lunchroom TV that's above the cafeteria doors. Um, so what I did was I created a high school line do not edit that pulls, that references data from that high school tab. So that way she didn't have to update it in two spots. So while I've got my formatting for the sidebar set over here in that high school tab, now I've got my formatting for the other TV on this other tab. So instead of having her, well, you gotta remember you gotta do it here and here, I took that out of the equation. So she just edits, she'll click on each building, update the date, and update what's going on. And yeah. So on the, on the other 